Today we're going to take a look at how to create our hollow pyramid. The objective of this lesson is to teach your students how to use the following LED blocks, which are your plot, unplot, and toggle. The common misconception with this lesson is to have your students just use your basic LED panel in order to create the pyramid and then hollow it out. What we want students to understand is that there are multiple ways of writing your code or programming your microbit in order to get the same outcome. So this is an opportunity for you to teach your students about three different blocks and how we can achieve the same outcome. So we're going to take a look at using our plot, our unplot, and our toggle blocks. Your plot block will basically turn the LED light on when you tell it to do so. Your unplot will turn that LED off and the toggle will have the opposite effect of whatever is already previously programmed. So if you have a LED that's already plotted and we toggle it, it will turn it off and it will do the opposite. If it is unplotted and we toggle it, it will turn it on. So what we're looking at doing is we want to create this solid pyramid. Now, one of the common misconceptions is that we have our students go ahead and just basically bring in a show LED. And from there, what we're doing is just having them go ahead and plot the pyramid. You will get the same result that we're asking them to do with the LED blocks, but we want them to understand that there's more choices and that they can use these LEDs um, and any of the commands in the LED drawer in order to achieve the same outcome. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and drop in some of these plot blocks. And you'll see we'll get the same outcome that we do with our show LEDs. Now here you can also see I already have it already plotted out of which coordinates you are going to need to use. Um, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and so on. So if we go and drop those plot blocks in, you'll see that we have the ability to get the same outcome that we did with our basic LEDs. We'll drop that in and we can see we should see the solid pyramid. Now, if your students do get confused um, and they're not sure exactly which coordinates each of those LEDs are located, you can hover over on your actual emulator here and it will pop up of what that coordinate actually is. So a little way to kind of help them along the way. Now, one of the things that I like to do with this is I always like to go ahead and throw a little pause block in here because if we don't, um, your LEDs are gonna turn on and then turn off immediately and we're just not gonna see it actually turn on at all. So once we have that pyramid actually programmed and we have that solid part, well, next step is to go and use either the unplot or toggle feature. If we use the unplot and we unplot 2, 4, 1, 4, 3, 4, and 2, 3, what you'll see is we're going to turn off four of those LEDs. And that's what's going to make that hollowed out. Now we can use the toggle feature as well. And that will do the same thing because those LEDs are already pre-programmed to be on. If we do this correctly, what we should see is that hollow pyramid blink or flash um, if we're using a forever loop. So again, we're going to go to the LED drawer. And in this case, let's try this with the unplots. So if we grab our unplots and we drop them in, notice what's going to happen here. We're going to plot these. And after a half second, it's going to flash really, really fast. Students may get a little discouraged by that. They don't understand why that's happening they need to make sure they go ahead and pause that unplot for a certain amount of time in order to get that desired outcome. So there you can see there is our, our solid pyramid then flashing to a hollow pyramid. Now we can do the same thing by using that unplot or in toggle feature. If I drop that toggle in, drop my pause block back down, you'll see that we'll go from a solid again to a flashing. Now here you can also see that one of my coordinates is not correct and that's why we're getting that little flashing down there but we can simply go back and fix that and we should be able to get the same result and there you go so you can use either one of these features but it's good for your students to understand the difference in the choices that they have when programming their hollow pyramid 